Hey everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Well, today is the first Friday of the month, which means it's time for Plant Fuel with Dr. Nikki Davis. And today she's going to be talking about how you can get your kids to go vegan or plant based. And she's also a contributor to the 2024 Vegan Health Bundle. She has an amazing product in it. And if you want to get it, from Dr. Nikki and support her. The link is in the chat in the show notes. She'll talk all about it. Please welcome her to the show. Hello, how are you? Hello, I'm good. It's so good to see you again. Yes, it's so fun. I miss our days back in the desert together. That was so I fun. know. Getting to hang out and go shopping together and eat food together. It was so much fun. We're going to have that, to do that again. That was the funnest time. Do you think you might go to Plantrition next year? Maybe. Yeah, I mean, this year or next? Uh, I'm mean, oh, actually next year, meaning next one this year in September. They haven't invited me, but man, if they did, it would be great. Well, isn't that one? So the last two have been in Palm Springs, and I think this one is in Anaheim. Right, which you could bring Augie and then, like, you know, on your breaks, take him to Disneyland. I know. I would love that. We'll have to see if I can make that work. That, that would, be, would so be so fun. fun because I think I think it's very fam family friendly and kid friendly, you know, to, to go there. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Well, speaking of kid friendly, your product in the bundle is very kid friendly. What is it? Yeah. Um, and actually, I'm very excited that uh, not only did I provide something that is kid friendly, but there are a couple of other items in the bundle that are kid friendly, too. So uh, I don't think that we had any kid specific items in the bundle the last year the last two years. So um, to have a few in there is great. But the one, the one that I created was a, an online course and recipes for kids uh, to follow called Vegan Kids Can Cook. And really what I wanted was a way for kids to get excited about being in the kitchen and cooking things that are pretty simple and easy, uh, but are also really delicious and healthy. And something that really a kid could with very little supervision could could make for the family and help out with. So um, I know that with my son, he's 11 years old and he's been vegan since birth. So, you know, I'm well versed in having a vegan kid. Um, but I know that for me, trying to get him to eat healthy foods, getting him into the kitchen and helping make those foods gets him more excited about eating it. So that's what I wanted to do. And it's fun. It includes 12 recipes. So 10 full recipes and then two bonus recipes. And I make all of them on videos. So you can follow right along in the videos. So as long as you have all the ingredients and the tools, which are listed in the recipes, you can put those all out and then have your kid watch the video and be able to make, make those recipes um, with just a little bit of supervision. That is so cool because it, and it's a much needed a product too. I think so too. You know, they're, they're actually... It, surprisingly, there aren't a lot of uh, options out there for things like that, for helping kids eat vegan. Uh, Augie and I had gone to uh, the library to try to find some books on cooking vegan. And we found, you know, some, but they included oils and vegan butters and things like that. And so to find something that's whole food, plant-based and oil-free, uh, that's much healthier for your kid, uh, I think is something that's really needed. I remember I started cooking when I was seven years old and it's because my family had a cookbook that's like a, it's like an antique today. I, I wish I had kept it. It was called the Betty Crocker cookbook for boys and girls. And it had pictures and the recipes were so easy, like two ingredients. So that is a much needed a uh, book. That's great. Yeah. Well, and, and I think, um, you know, I, I was looking through and actually I wrote down, so there is uh, a course called no more picky eating by Margot Freitag. So that's in the bundle as well. So if you've got a kid who's a picky eater, um, this helps you kind of work through that. Um, I've never had that issue, but boy, as a family doctor, I've heard, you know, a lot of parents struggle with that with kids that just don't want to eat anything but chicken nuggets and mac and cheese, right? Um, so trying to figure out how to help your kids eat a more varied diet. And then especially if you're in a family where you're going plant-based and you want your whole family to be part of that lifestyle, um, helping them discover new foods and make it exciting for them, make it an adventure that they get to go on and, and trying all these new, new foods. 
Um, there's another one that's called the Parent Starter Guide to Ditching Toxins. Uh, so that's pretty cool, like looking for toxins that are in your everyday life and trying to get rid of those uh, for your kids. And then there's even another one. So there, I guess there are four different um, kid-friendly items in the bundle. The other one is from the plant-based nutrition movement called Kid Approved Recipes. So it's just uh, kid-friendly recipes. So lots of things to choose from. And if you only wanted those four things in the bundle, it would still be well worth the $49 just for those kid-friendly items. I, I agree. Now, as a, as a doctor, when parents say their kids won't eat healthy or they only eat chicken nuggets, do you think like it's because of what they fed them before? I mean, because like would a kid like Augie being raised vegan, does he he doesn't turn his nose up at healthy food. Right. And I mean, part of it is, yes, it's just what, what they're used to, you know, what, what do you put in front of them? Uh, what are they expecting? And it, just having that be the normal for them is really important. And sometimes what that means is if, if you are trying to transition a kid from eating more of a standard American diet of chicken nuggets and mac and cheese, that you just don't give that to them anymore. That is not an option anymore, right? You're the adult, you're the parent, you get to choose um, unless they're out with friends. Um, but when they're at home and you have the ability to decide what they put in their mouths, you don't have to choose the one thing that they will eat that is not healthy for them. You can choose to not buy those things and give them something else. And you know what? Kids aren't going to starve themselves to death. They won't. They will eat. They might, you know, be mad for a little while and, and refuse to at first. Um, but you, but you don't have to worry about that. Eventually they will, they will eat food. They will get hungry and they will want to eat. That's so I think it's, it's about yeah. providing that for them. I heard that a child will not starve themselves to death. I mean, unless under very rare circumstances, especially if they have other healthy options that it's not just eat this, you know, if you, you know, they maybe don't like broccoli, but maybe they like carrots or maybe they don't like tofu, but they like beans, you know? Right. Right. And, you know, there are good options. Um, you know, like in my, uh, in my online course, that's in the bundle, I, I make a Mac and cheese, uh, you know, and it's, uh, easy peasy Mac and peas. So it's, uh, you know, a, a macaroni and cheese that has peas in it and very simple to make very delicious and completely whole food plant-based. So you can also choose to say, well, if that's their only food that they will make, what can I make that is similar to that, but is a much healthier option. Yep. That sounds really good to me. Um, you know, there's over 2000 recipes in the bundle, I'm told. Oh my goodness. That's, a lot. <laughs> That's amazing. I, I was really excited about um, Julia Dunaway coming out with another Japanese book. Did you see that one? She makes amazing recipes. Luckily she's going to be on the show, so I can't wait. Yeah. Her, her yeah. food is next level. I got to tell you, she's yeah. really we have some amazing creators. Um, I hope, do you have a food, not I hope, but do you have a food dehydrator? Uh, you know, I used to, and then I didn't use it very much. And so I don't have one anymore, but now I'm starting to think I need to get one because I want to make those wraps that you've yeah, been the making. wraps and the tacos. So, you know, that'd be, that's, those are, I think you would find those delicious because I feel like even though they're raw and vegan, they would be very kid friendly. Cause you know, it, it would be, they can, you know, she does them in colorful colors, like putting blue spirulina in and a kid could pick it up and, you know, take it to lunch. It could be super fun. I love that idea. I think that's, I mean, cause who doesn't like to eat something that's wrapped up in a burrito? I mean, it's just, it's so much easier, you know, than having yeah. a fork and a knife and a plate, but I get lazy and I, I, you know, for a while I was like, I was making them every week and then it run out and I'm like, why can't you just sell them? But anyway, that's, <laughs> that's not, how well, it, you know, yeah, I'm definitely going to have to get a food dehydrator one of these days again. Maybe I can go to, you know, uh, like a secondhand store and see if somebody's given theirs away. Um, but speaking of delicious recipes, so you remember when you and I were hanging out, um, being besties at the Plantrition Conference last year, uh, you did a food demonstration, you made a bunch of recipes and, and taught us different cooking techniques. Um, and it was mostly, I think, healthcare providers that were in there. Oh, doctors, <laughs> pharmacists, nurses, cause I think they gave you some CEUs, right? 
Yes. Yeah. That was the funnest thing. I mean, I've never, I, I want to say I've never had an audience of just a hundred doctors because I have when I've spoken at Kaiser's, but the, you guys had the best senses of humors and it was just the funnest time. I mean, that's why I really hope they invite me back. And at first I was like, oh, they're not giving me a keynote, but this was way better than just doing a lecture in front of like 600. It was more intimate. We got to, it was just really fun. It was so much fun. And you fed me so well. You, you kept making all these delicious recipes and you're like, Dr. Davis, come up here, come try it. <laughs> I, sh I was, I was, I was showing unfair favoritism now that I think, <laughs> but I knew that I knew that you would say something nice about it. Yeah. Well, you make really good food. And so, you know, what's funny is um, you made these um, Goodman peanut shoes uh, for that. I and gave them to Dr. McDougall. I gave them to Dr. William Lee, who put it on Instagram live because they're really, really good. Yeah. And you gave me one and it, I mean, so delicious, decadent. It's and and actually, it would be really kid friendly because they're really easy to make. Now, of course, um, you know, it has like a chocolate layer on top, so you do have to melt chocolate, which is you know something you definitely want to have an adult watching. But other than that, it's such simple ingredients. You're not cooking anything, and um, and I think that it could be a really good option for kids who are maybe used to having like a candy bar, and instead mm -hmm. of doing that. You have something like this, which you don't want to be eating something like this every single day, but it's a special, a special treat, right? Absolutely. Um, and I'm thinking for kids to not melt, they could just press chocolate chips on the top. You know, they could do that. That's if a good they, idea. If it was young enough and just the melting was, you know, they couldn't reach it. They could, they could press a little chocolate, you know, because there, there's date sweet yeah. and chocolate chips now. So that's amazing. Well, that's a great idea because then you could mix in the chocolate chips with the peanuts and have it be like this topping that you put on top and just press it in there. Um, but AJ, I was so excited that you included the recipe for the Goodman peanut shoes in the bundle. Um, that was the first thing I was like, I'm making those. Um, so I have them. I made them. Look how yummy. Can you see them? Don't those look amazing? Did a great job. It's they look enticing, and don't did, they look good? Has Augie tasted them, and did he like them? He has not tasted them yet. I made them this morning. He's in school, so when he gets home, he's gonna have a special treat waiting for him. Nice. Um, but I haven't even tried these yet. I just I just cut them up. I've got them. In fact, so you um you use uh is it a nine by Twelve. I use a nine by nine, but an eight by eight nine would work. So it depends how thick you want them. I kind of like them a little bit thicker, you know? Yeah. And I actually, this is what I had. It was just like a bread pan. And so I did half the recipe. Um, but that's, that's how they look when they're, when they're in there. And mine's just sitting in the, in the fridge right now. Uh, um, so I cut a few and, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Hmm. So good. It's like three ingredients too. Well, maybe four. Yeah. If you use the vanilla powder. So, yeah. But I'm impressed with myself because they taste what I remember them tasting like when you made them. Nice. <laughs> That's really good. And they freeze great. And they're great for potlucks. Cause you, if you cut them small, I was telling, um, one of the other guests earlier today that I got six, not in that pan, but I've gotten 64 pieces just because little, little tiny bites, you know? Yeah. Well, and I, I think I told you that I started a potluck in Salt Lake City where I'm, where I live. Nice. How many people are coming? Um, well, so the first one, I think I want to say that we had like maybe 10 or 12. And then this last one we had 15 or 16. It seems to be getting bigger every month. Um, but I'm going to make these for the next potluck. That is fantastic. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It'll be a nice, sweet treat to have at the end. But yeah, it's so much fun to have a potluck where you can go and, and eat delicious, healthy food and, and just meet other, other people that are trying to eat healthy and live a healthy lifestyle. It's the best. I wish you lived here. We had, we had over a hundred people at our last one because are we, you serious? yeah, cause we've been having a band come and that that's a big draw, you know, the music and they can dance. And then sometimes we'll ask for vendors to come like California balsamic and local spicery. And so it just like, it kind of makes it more of an event. And so it's, uh, wow. it's, yeah, that's, I think that's why I moved here. Not, I think I know that's why I moved here for community because it's so important. I mean, people can be vegan alone in their room, but it's so much funner when you have friends and families that join you in your health journey. Absolutely. I mean, I think it's key because when you're doing something that most people don't do, which is eat only plants, um, it can be very isolating and 
And I think some people give up on it because of that, because you get invited to go out to eat with your friends or, you know, you're going to be going over to family's house for a holiday. And it's, you know, it's not fun when, when people think that you're weird and, and aren't really supportive of you. So finding that community for yourself is, is so important. Yeah, I think I think you're absolutely right that that's when, you know, especially if they're if you're trying to eat healthy and they're just, you know, drinking a lot of alcohol and eating a lot of junk food and, and your environment isn't clean. It's so hard. But what unfortunately, not everybody's like Augie or Dr. Goldhammer's kid vegan since birth. They've made changes often late in life. And, you know, their fa their family's taste buds are are set or they're just addicted to all the sugar, fat and salt. And they just don't they don't want to change, you know, so it can be hard. But I think it's different for different personalities, how much it bothers you, you know? Right, right. Um, you know, the other thing I wanted to mention with just raising a vegan kid, um, you know, my experience is a little different because he, he's always been vegan. Um, so I didn't have to go through the the trouble of trying to change his diet uh, at, at some point, which I think would be very much more difficult, right? Um, than just keeping a kid vegan because that's all he knows. And he's never really said anything about wanting to try animal foods or, or junk food. But, um, but I was finding that, um, so there's this book on Amazon and I think it's Dr. Goldner's kid who came up with it, but it's the 50 comebacks for yeah, eating Solomon kids. Tadlock. He's been on the show a couple of times. It's adorable. That book. It's great. Yeah. So, you know, if you, if you've got a kid who's, um, either already vegan or going vegan or plant-based, um, then having something like that so that they, because I think that that's also another part of it is educating your child so that they know what to say in those circumstances, because they're going to get questions from their friends and other people. And, you know, you don't want them to be embarrassed or not know what to say. So in addition to that, I've always made sure that I educate him on why, why is it important to be healthy? Why do we eat this way? Not just, Hey, we're vegan. You can't eat that. It's well, here's why, because boy, it really feels good to, to be active and, and feel good and be able to do all the things that I love to do and live a really long, healthy life. Um, you know, be able to be the best at, you know, my son loves to play baseball. You know, you can be a really good baseball player if you eat really healthy food instead of just eating junk food. It's going to, you know, make it more difficult for you to do well. You know, so just really coming up with the reasons that help the kid realize why it's a good idea to eat healthy foods. Yeah. You know, do you think it, it's, uh, it was maybe easier for you than some people uh, uh, to um, have a vegan kid? Because then you're a doctor. And so if they challenge you, you, you know, they can't challenge you the way they challenge the average person, you know? Well, I would say that that's true. That would, that was true when he was about like five or six, but now that he's 11, he's definitely like, even if I tell him something that is absolutely, I know that has to do with health, He's like, uh, I don't know. I don't know that that's true. You know, he's he's definitely at that age where he's challenging even even things that I tell him that that I know definitely as a doctor. So so I would say, yeah, it in a way, um, you know, that, you know, having that knowledge is helpful. But, you know, as your kid, you know, they they like to challenge you and they don't always believe you when you tell them things. What I meant though, though, people like they, they'll tell parents, it's not healthy for kids to be vegan. Like they won't challenge you because you're oh. you know what I mean? Yeah. I see. So yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. But you know, it's interesting. Um, I thought that we'd get more issues at school with him bringing his own food and having other kids, you know, wondering why he's eating something strange. But I've noticed that not only are there more kids out there eating plant-based and, and healthy and vegan. Um, but that kids are excited about trying the foods that he brings. Um, you know, he gets kids wanting to try the food that he brings. And, and when he has friends over to our house, uh, they're always loving the food. And it's funny because I'll get messages from their parents saying, you know, how did you make that? What, what exactly is in it? You know, and it's very simple stuff. It's, it's nothing, it's not rocket science, <laughs> you know, it's just simple stuff that just tastes good and, and kids love it. And they don't even realize that it's vegan. Uh, it's just delicious food. When your son goes to school, do they offer lunch or do all the kids bring it? And if they offer lunch, is there anything healthy at all? 
So the school that he's in now does not have lunch. So, so everyone brings their own thing. Um, but in the school that he was previously, um, they did offer lunches. And, and from what I saw, it was a lot of packaged um, foods. I mean, one of the things that they had was a, a grilled cheese sandwich that was in a plastic container that they heated up while it was in this plastic um, wrapper. And, and, and it was just, yeah, grilled cheese. So uh, that, that just can't be good. Um, and you would see, and I actually volunteered and helped out with lunchtime and oh my gosh, the amount of things that got thrown away, healthy foods that were getting thrown away because they required that they would have some sort of healthy vegetable or fruit on their plate. Um, but I think, yeah, the kids just aren't used to it. When they're at home, they're not eating those things. So it's hard to force them to do that when they're at school. That is just... That's cray cray. Yeah. Nice. Nice. Yeah. If you guys have any questions for Dr. Nikki Davis or you want to get the bundle from her, I've been putting the link in the chat and the show note. Just post it there. There we go. Yeah. And I'm just clicking it. It definitely works. I just tried it myself. Oh, it's just so exciting. I just I love that so many of the wonderful plant-based doctors like you and Dr. McDougal and Dr. Furman and Dr. Uh, Loomis and, and many more are, are in the bundle. Uh, what is the name of the book, Marley? Uh, it, it's not, a. It, I don't think, it, so tell them the name of your product because it's not a book, it's a course, but it, a book comes with it. So mine is, it, it's an online course um, with, with PDFs that you can print that are the recipes. So there's a recipe book that comes with it, but it's just called Vegan Kids Can Cook. Yep. Nice. And I, um, I wanted to say there are, uh, you know, you mentioned the vegan doctors that are part of the bundle. And I was really excited to see, of course, uh, you know, my hero, Dr. McDougall, uh, that he did the gut health one um, that is normally a $95 course uh, that's now part of the bundle. So even if you just use that course for $49, I mean, that's, that's incredible. I know. Uh, and that's what we try to say. This isn't, uh, this isn't a scheme. It's just, it really is eight, over $8,000 worth of content for $49, but it's 10 days only. And when it's gone, it's gone. Oh, did you have a, a, a chance to look at the um, the contributor, the multi-contributor book? Because I thought that Lisa did a beautiful job creating that. Yes. And I think that one had, what, 70 something recipes? 70 in recipes. It? It, was, it was well over a hundred pages. Yeah. So, I mean, to bring in all of these amazing people and have everyone submit a recipe for that, I mean, that's just an amazing bonus that you get with the entire bundle. Um, the other thing that I really liked was um, Dr. Lori Marvis and Brittany Giroudi got together and they put together um, lab, like plant-based annual labs. So Dr. Marvis, you know, she's a medical doctor and she put together kind of what you should ask your doctor to test every year as a plant-based eater. Uh, and then in addition to that, you know, Brittany Giroudi, of course, is an amazing recipe creator. And um, and so then they have a recipe book that goes along with that. So I was really excited to see that one, too. Nice. Nice. Yeah. You're getting ready for a big trip. I am. I know. I'm a little nervous. Uh, I haven't been out of the country in, in a while, uh, but I'm leaving for Belize on Monday with my mom. Uh, and I'm going to be doing a... Uh, women's only cooking and adventure weight loss retreat in Belize. So we are going to be cooking together, making delicious plant-based foods and just adventuring, doing lots of fun things, hiking to waterfalls and going through the jungle, um, snorkeling, hanging out on the beach. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm really, really looking forward to it. Have you ever been there before? I have not. No, this is wow. my first time. Well, that's good. Do you know any of the people that are coming? I do. Um, so first of all, I know Naomi, who owns the retreat center in Belize. Um, so she's she's a pretty well-known vegan coach. Um, and I think she's been on your show before with her husband. Mm -hmm. um, but so, and then as far as the participants go, besides my mom, <laughs> of course I know her, but I do have a couple of my patients that are going to be coming along. So yeah, so it's going to be a really fun group. That'll be, that's so cool. So you'll have your patient. So are you going to do any medical care while you're there? No medical care. No, 
No, we're, we're going to talk about lifestyle medicine stuff. So just kind of the general pillars of lifestyle medicine. Uh, and so we'll, we'll do that, but, um, but I, I can't do any medical care while we're there. So it's not okay. going to be. Oh, Cause you're not licensed in that country, right? Right. <laughs> That would make sense, you know. Um, uh, Marley says, "What is the name of the retreat place that you're going to?" Um, good question. Um, so her name is uh, Naomi. It's vegan Naomi, and um, I don't remember the the actual name of her retreat center. Let's see if I can look it up real quick. Or I could, I could, yeah, because she, like you said, she's been on the show, and Dave, who makes the muffins every day there, has been on the show. Yes. It does sound like a really cool. Oh, place. so her website is goingveganforhealth.com. And if you go on there, then you can just look at her vegan cooking retreats, Belize. And it's called Vegan Villa Kula Belize. Yep. Yeah. So MJ saying, so your course is a video cook along course with a printable PDF. Exactly. Yep. That's all kid friendly, easy recipes that kids can make. Kid friendly and mother and doctor approved. Yes. <laughs> if we stay on long enough, will Augie come home and get to eat a peanut chew? <laughs> he might. He <laughs> might. You never know. <laughs> yeah. And it, what his favorite food is still tofu, right? He he does. He loves it. It's funny because I'll I'll be chopping it up, you know, to put it in the air fryer, and I turn around and a couple of pieces are missing before I even cook it. <laughs> it's funny. <laughs> but he also really loves broccoli. I mean, you know, he loves the starches, like, you know, rice and beans. I mean, he loves beans. I mean, that was one of his very first foods, actually. I would just put black beans out, you know, because <clears throat> when they're little and they can start to, like, pick stuff up and pinch, he would pick up a bean and just eat beans. Like, um, I'm just curious. What do you think? Do, do, I mean, like, because you said Dr. McDougall's your hero. He's pretty much mine, too. And, you know, he recommends a low-fat, vegan, or plant-based diet, you know, oil-free. But, it, like, do you think this thing is, oh, kids need a lot more fat? I mean, everybody needs some fat, but just because you're a kid, do you need a lot more? You know, I don't think you need a, a lot more, um, but I certainly am not as, you know, I, I, don't, I don't keep him from having, you know, avocados and nuts and peanut butters and things like that. Um, you know, I try to stay away from having too many high fat foods all the time. Um, but for him, I mean, he has no problem. He's got an amazing metabolism and he's running around all the time. And so he can just devour calories like no problem. Yeah. Um, so, so yeah, I don't, I don't think it's worth restricting kids as long as they're eating healthy, whole food, plant-based. Yeah. Nice. Nice. And, you yeah. know, I have to say that he tends to to gravitate toward the more starchy foods, you know, like the mashed potatoes and, you know, air fried potatoes, uh, you know, the rice and beans, uh, rice and tofu. So he really likes the things that are, you know, yes. less, less fatty, I would say. Interesting. So uh, Helene is asking an interesting question. Do you have to expose young children to foods that could potentially be an allergen to avoid possible anaphylactic shock later in life? For example, eggs, fish, meat, et cetera, peanuts? Um, so we, we actually now know that in, you know, it used to be that we would try to keep kids away from say peanuts, um, hoping that they wouldn't develop an allergy, but that actually does the opposite. So, um, so it is important that if you don't want, you know, that you want to make it less likely that they get an allergy to something that you, that you do give them those things. And it's, but I wouldn't recommend giving them, you know, meat and fish. Um, but if, if you're worried about peanuts, um, you know, don't hesitate to give them peanuts. The other thing is also just having kids around animals, um, having them around dogs and cats. They, when yeah, not, not have such a, you know, Robin Chutkin was on the show and she says, we're too clean. You know, that's part of the problem. Right. Right. Well, and, and I hate to say it, but you know, kids that are around like mice and cockroaches as they, at, when they're younger tend to have fewer allergies when they're older. So we're just, yeah, we're not supposed to be as clean. Uh, I mean, humans, we just evolved to not be in such clean environments. Um, of course, you want to be careful. You don't want to be exposing your kids to things, um, you know, that could make them ill. Um, but, but I do think it's important that as they grow, that you do expose them to, you know, animals and, and peanuts and things like that so that their bodies can get used to it. 
maybe we can expose them to elephants because then they'd get the animal and the peanut at the same time. Hey, there you go. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> uh, nice. Um, oh, uh, Camille asks, was your son ever a picky eater when he was young or did he always like the foods you served him? He's never been picky. He's never been picky. He's always eaten all pretty much everything I've ever given him. Um, you know, the only thing that he didn't like when he was younger, I tried to make him some uh, sweet potato or no, they were black bean brownies uh, and he didn't like the chocolate. And so it took him several years to really like chocolate. So now he will like these, you know, these Goodman peanut shoes. Um, but for a really long time, he didn't like chocolate. But that's I wouldn't say that's picky. It was just a preference. Mm -hmm. um, but I've had no issue, you know, giving him just delicious, healthy foods. I mean, I think I told you this once, actually, where uh, I had made a big salad and he and he was probably five or six and he was just annihilating it. I mean, this big kale salad with chickpeas on it and everything. So I started taking a video of it because I thought, what kid does this? <laughs> it's just excited about eating greens. Um, but really, it's just about exposing them to that, just getting them used to it, that that's normal. Yeah, that's good. Well, thank you so much. I can't wait to dive into your contribution. Other than macaroni and cheese, what other kid-friendly recipes do you have? Yeah, so there's stuff for the entire day. So there's some breakfast options, like there's a, a morning parfait. There's a really easy three-ingredient pancakes. There's snack ideas, uh, like crispy chickpeas. There's lunch ideas, uh, and then dinner ideas. Uh, so you know, lots of things. And then there's a dessert. So just chocolate chip cookies. Uh, so pretty much anything that you need for the day, uh, you know, even quick after school snacks uh, that you can make really easily. Uh, so yeah, so it kind of covers the entire day of things that, that you could make. And what's fun is, so for instance, the parfait, that's something that you could make for a family member for a special occasion, you know, like for Mother's Day or Father's Day, uh, your kid can be making something for you. Uh, you know, and I think that that can be really special for them. Nice. Well, thank you, Dr. Davis. Let's see, you'll be back the 1st of April, which is- a, Yes. That's it. I think you'll be back April 5th. That's a Friday. So you'll is be it? back. Yeah, you'll be back before Easter, before Passover. It will be. Yep. April 5th. Yeah. yeah. And well, it'll be right before I go on another trip. <laughs> oh, what, what's your other trip? Well, I'm going to Italy because- when I was in college, I did a study abroad in France and we're doing a, a reunion. So there are going to be about 30 of us that are all getting back together again in Italy. Oh, that sounds amazing. Yeah. Well, you'll have to get some great recipes that you can make on the show. Yeah. Great idea. Oh, great. Well, thank you, Dr. Davis. And don't forget, if you like Dr. Davis and want to support her, click the link below, get the bundle from her because each bundle person contributor has a different link so they get the credit for it and you really help us out to keep creating wonderful experiences like this for you guys absolutely and then you get to enjoy the recipe for these delicious goodman shoes that i'm going to be and over 2000 over, over 2, other recipes as well exactly all right thanks dr davis and thanks all of you for watching another episode of chef aj live please come back in about 90 minutes at 1 p.m for another fabulous contributor one of the best plant-based chefs there is Mark Reinfeld, he's going to talk about seven culinary keys to elevate your plant-based food. Take care, everyone. Thanks for